Right, so it's team training camp time. Pre-December camp, everyone goes to Mallorca. Uh, well, sorry, everyone goes to Calpe except Ineos that go to Mallorca. We're going to go through some Ineos numbers and we're also going to get on the hype train of Dan Bingham. Is he going to ride for Ineos? So we'll first get into Dan Bingham. So randomly, I've heard rumours that he was going to sign for Ineos, but then I realised I think they ran out of people. So I was like, like numbers, squad-wise. So I was very confused as to if he was actually going to ride for Ineos. But anyway, I saw it popped up that he'd ridden with Brandon Rivera, and I was like, wait, hang on a minute. Like, that can't be a coincidence. So anyway, looked at his ride, and it was like, he's done the same intervals, and he's ridden with Ethan Hayter that Brandon Rivera did. So we'll go into these intervals now. These are the, probably the most exciting intervals of the whole day, of the whole ride, uh, video. But then we got some ramp test stuff for Bernal and Rivera. Can we work out that threshold, or is it something else we'll find out later anyway so first effort i don't really get this um but yeah so it's like just cruising and then we get into the nine and a half minutes at like what well, maybe threshold ish 344 on the flat then like three a uh, couple minutes off eight minutes off and then just do another one a little bit lower and then again this is just cruising to the climb um and then we've got these like low cadence efforts now we're just going to go into it here, and you can see Ineos do this a lot. If you've seen any of my other videos about Ineos training techniques, they enjoy this. So at the moment, it doesn't actually look too polarized um, in terms of power, but it is. So it averages 77 cadence, but if we look here, it goes like 324 um, at 69 cadence, um, which actually isn't the most extreme. You'll see some of the other boys go down to like 40, um, and then again, Dan Bingham, like 70 cadence, 300 watts. So he didn't seem as obsessed, but you can see here he does like 63 at 326 and then 91 at 327. Um, but often what they'll do is they'll go higher power, lower cadence, and then recover at like tempo. So I guess it's like over-unders, but really trying to do the low cadence. And the reason you can do low cadence is because apparently it's more efficient converting type two into type one, which is obviously what you want if you're gonna be endurance boy. So that's basically where the science from behind it comes from. That's why people do low cadence, it's that sort of intervals. Um, and then the rest of it, I think maybe some motor pacing or something around here. But anyway, Dan Bigham, he's gonna ride for Ineos. Is he just gonna be the error engineer and they're like, you can come on our training camps? Maybe the latter, I'm not sure, um, we'll see. But anyway, we're gonna go through Brandon Rivera's numbers for a little bit. He um, posts all his power day, it's just quite chill to go through. I, I might do Bernal because but that requires more prep because no one really cares about R Rivera as much, unfortunately. This was Carapaz and, um, and Bernal, and he was just cruising, you can see heart rate. like his. I think his heart rate monitor, he needs to get a new one. He might be a pro, but heart rate monitor, as you can see, doesn't really work. And anyway, it's just like a zone two, zone one ride, just cruising around. Um, you can see again here, his power meter is all, his power day is all a bit messed up. But again, you look here, nothing too crazy. Again, most of this is just, you know, getting some Ks in. Uh, we can see here Brandon Rivera's ride as well. It's like, you know, a couple tempo efforts or whatever on the flat, potentially a time trial day if we look at the efforts they were doing and the speed on the flat maybe, I'm not 100% sure, but anyway, it seems like, you know, get some tempo in, nothing too crazy. We look here like 10 minutes at 290, I mean, for this boy, not nothing mental. Uh, so it's basically just like cruise along. Then we've got the calf spin, and this is an outrageous calf spin. Like probably one of the best calf spins I've ever seen. Uh, don't know why my light's gone, sorry about that. Might be out in a power cut, I don't know. Anyway, most outrageous calf spin I've ever seen, 92 watts looks absolutely dreamy uh so yeah i guess they like to do their recovery rides incredibly easy then we can see some more more crews in here you know like mac power 270 for 10 minutes again like nothing crazy just just get the k's in basically um seems to be what the boy says so now we're going to look at his ramp test now i don't know if this is a max ramp test because i've crunched the numbers his best is 410 right that comes at a threshold of like 310 and like Brandon Rivera is not great but he doesn't have a lower threshold than me like <laughs> he might be a little bit lighter than me like a kilo or two but I reckon him having a threshold 309 is wrong um I think maybe it's a vo2 test or it could literally be a lactate test just to figure out what threshold is and you know they go over it obviously so the last minute it's like 410 but it wasn't a maximum one and that's how I got to 206 so maybe just rubbish on the turbo I'm not really sure how much I can read into this because I don't think his threshold is 309. If you if you do 410 times 0.75, like 75% of it, it says 309. So again, um, then he did another one here, which was like more of a step test, which again could be 
you know, he's doing three minutes each one. And if you look here, that's three minutes to 350, which is why I'm like, mm, I don't know if that's like a threshold 400. Do you think 350 would be really, uh, sorry, threshold 300 to 350 would be really hard. So I'm not 100% sure what these tests are. If anyone does know, let me know. But I assume they're just lactate testing, but not to max, because I that burnout was the same. His threshold's like 320, and I'm like, nah, nah, it's definitely higher than that. Anyway, this is the same intervals Dan Bingham was doing. So you can see the first one's like 245, so like tempo, nothing too crazy on the flat. And then again, 260, a little rest. And then you can see the over-unders here. He just does it as a flat 10 minute interval. Um, and you can see again, he goes down to like 50 cadence, uh, like 290 watts. And if you look at the middle the middle section here, um, again, actually similar power, 296. And if you look at his heart rate, like 300 watts, 160 heart rate, that doesn't, to me, suggest that's his threshold. Obviously lower cadence, lower heart rate, but even so. And then again, this one was like the opposite. So it was like sort of higher cadence to begin with. Um, at 297 and then you have the middle section which is lower cadence 54 which I guess you know as I said before um, can help to develop type 2 to type 1 quicker um, a lot of people say low cadence is wrong I don't really do any low cadence training but I think maybe for others they do enjoy um, and then yeah again this is just 10 minutes I assume motor pacing or just sitting on one everyone else is pulling turns um, so again decent efforts and then you can see towards the end on, on the Sunday just does it at two hours easy um, again, his heart rate says 192, but uh, I don't quite know what this is here. Like, is this just motor pacing or what? Or some over-unders? Could just be over-unders to keep the legs fresh. I'm not 100% sure. Again, but yeah, that's the week for Brandon Rivera. Like, nothing crazy. 22 hours. Like, yeah, it's, it's, sorry, this is burnout's week, actually. But 22 hours for him is like, well, it's decent. But, you know, some seven-hour rides in there. He did a seven-hour ride today. Um, so, again, like, this is seven hours, which he did um, yesterday which is like decent for him again you can see the power is a bit messed up but again getting the over-unders here so you can see he does them at 320 which is decent um and like 90 cadence and then the other two are just 45 again you can see here average of 70 cadence higher cadence lower cadence then he does an effort here as well which is like 350 watts for uh, eight minutes 12 vam of like 1400 so probably not six watts per kilo but um it's it, we'll be able to see the dip gradient Strava source seems to not enjoy the gradients too much these days. But anyway, 6%, 22k an hour. Sounds about right, maybe 6 watts per kilo. And then just cruises, cruises home to finish off a seven hour day. He calls it an apocalypsis day. I, I I think, yeah, it looks pretty tough, to be honest. Um, it doesn't look the hardest day I've ever seen in the world for him. Like, um, but definitely seven hours on the bike, always big. <coughs> and again, this is his testing here. If we look at it's like mi ma uh, minute max, which comes on this bit here, like 435, like there's no way his threshold is like 320. So I don't know exactly what they're doing here, but you can see the final uh, rate he gets to is 376 for the last three minutes. So obviously like 20 watts stronger than, um, what's his name, Brandon Rivera. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's, you know, that's that's what they do at Ineos. They like long Ks, like the over under cadence, that seems to be a big thing for them. But yeah, we, we might make some more videos about burnout and his training. Um, and yeah, and maybe some more about mine, um, but you know, we'll see, it is what it is. I plan to do a vlog tomorrow, so that'll be out probably Friday, uh, which should be pretty sweet. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching, hope you enjoy, and see you in the next one.